is a Mercedes C230 and uh, this dashboard thing wigging out I mean like whatever but the problem is it's setting a P I believe it's a P1747 code and a check engine light so it will not pass emissions and there's not a lot of information on that code um, one thing I read says it was a transmission control module fault the other thing I read uh, it was a uh, to do with the dash and that these instrument clusters have bad electrolytic capacitors and the internet loves to address bad electrolytic capacitors just that's like a fetish man get your lube out soldering iron your capacitors and just woo baby So anyway, uh, I don't see how electrolytic capacitors could cause this symptom right here that you're seeing, but I mean, maybe if the processor in there was rebooting over and over, I don't know, but we can certainly take it out and take it apart and check that. This thing has a lot of miles on it. It's like this vehicle is like way past its end of life. But, you know, people will hang on to something uh, forever. So anyway, let's get this dash out and see if we can fix this. I'm really, I don't care about all the blinky Christmas tree strobing. I, I'm really interested in the check engine light. I mean, just sitting here idling, this is what it's doing. So I'm really hoping this is just electrolytic capacitors. Well, we have three electrolytics here. And it would be a hope and a dream that this would fix it. And I think it very well could be one of those is bad. You see it's a switching mode supply here, a little buck boost with the transformer. And this right here would be the chip. So here's our coil this red thing so we'll have to check these with the uh, ESR meter the question is is how to get to them uh, this is not very serviceable so we have three electrolytic capacitors here the blue one on top is a 390 at 10 volts the black one is 1,000 microfarads at 25, and the little silver one is 220 at 25 volt. The blue one, which you can see looks like the filter for the, you can see the two diodes there and then the, the transformer. The blue one is measuring about 3 ohms, which is kind of a lot of resistance. So this is measuring the blue one. It's about a little more than 3 ohms, which is kind of high for, well, it is high for a lot of resistance for 390 microfarad at 10 volts. All I was able to get locally is a 470 at 16, which is probably similar ESR to a 390 at 10. Uh, and you can see the difference. This is going to be very hard to change. Uh, those are the leads right there. Those are the two leads right there. So it's going to be very tricky to get that out, but we're going to try it. Looking at the back, you can see this kind of dark areas. See how that's kind of um, oxidized right there, that darkish. That sort of leads me to think that these capacitors were outgassing because that's like corrosion eating the the traces away where they're not covered with the green so there's the 220 here's the thousand and here's the 390 
yeah, 390 at 10 volts. Negative goes down. It's definitely bad. As soon as I hit it with the soldering iron, it you could smell the fish. It's not real obvious that it's leaking, but it, it is. It's bad. One new capacitor, just trying to do the bare minimum on this car to get it to pass emissions because the whole car is done, expired, but let's see, let's see, high hopes here, high hopes. Absolutely love this one foot wire harness, this is great. All right, testing. Still have the brake light and the check engine light on, but I did not put it back together because I want to see. Ooh. It looks stable though, doesn't it? I want to make sure I get these. All these things about zeroed out. It looks like it fixed it. It actually looks like it fixed it. There we go. Let's go on a little ride here. No more beeping. Well, what, you don't like that I have my seatbelt on, you nanny state babysitter? Hold on a second. Let me... So these two lights at the bottom, oil and water, were flashing before. So the, the question is, is it going to get rid of the code? Oh, shut up. Actually, that made one of the two lights go off there. But it's still beeping. Hold on, what light went off? I think the check engine light went off. Did it already fix it? I think that's the check engine light. Let me check the brake fluid. So interesting, it's still got the P1747 and we have two incomplete monitors, so we need to get one more monitor complete before it'll test. But as long as the light's off and we get one more monitor complete, it'll pass. So I think we fixed it, the capacitor fixed it. We added some brake fluid, so it was a little bit low. So we're 100% here. It's just the backlight for the mileage has gone out. I don't, I didn't touch that though. So I would just say this. If you don't have mad ninja skills with component level replacement, don't attempt to do this. Get someone to do it. No, I don't do it. You can't send me your dash. I don't, and I didn't even get this perfect. Look at, there's a little freaking, uh, what is that, an insect? There's a freaking insect in there. And I am not taking this thing all the way back apart. It's really, really, really hard to get something like this. Hopefully, I don't know, maybe I'll turn the car over. It'd be easier to flip the car up on its side and get that insect out of there than it would be to take this all apart. Taking the car out on a little light cruise here to complete the rest of the monitors. And just to complete monitors is just usually cruising around 50 miles an hour. You don't really want to go 65, 70 miles an hour. You just want to stay 50, 55 miles an hour. Light cruise, uh, steady.
lot of people think the faster I drive, the better it'll work, but that's not the way a computer works. So, check it in the morning and see how many monitors have completed. So after the long drive, it still didn't complete the air system monitor, but I'm not going to worry about that because it was complete before we started working on this car. The 1747 is still there, but the light is not on, so being a 99, it will pass emissions. 99, you're allowed to have pending or active codes if the light is not on, and you're allowed to have any one monitor incomplete. I could have cleared the code and completely wiped all the monitors after we replaced the capacitor, but since the code will automatically go away after 50 something restarts and the light cleared itself there's no reason to wipe the code and wipe all the monitors and start all over again it's sometimes it can be hard as hell to complete monitors on a european car especially with 230,000 miles on it and there you go success